this video is about Newton's second law of motion, which is sometimes called the law of acceleration. The objectives of this video is at the end I want you to be able to say I can state Newton's second law of motion. You're going to be able to use that second law of motion to describe the relationships between mass, force, and acceleration using a, a mathematical formula. And also I want you to be able to talk about those three things in terms of if they're directly proportional or inversely proportional. And then you're going to use this math, math formula in different ways to find acceleration, force, or mass, to find one of those things when you're given the other two. Let's jump right in. I want to go back for a second to look at Newton's first law of motion again. And that was that every object continues at a state of rest, stays at rest, or stays in motion unless acted on by an outside force. So Newton's first law really just describes a couple of things. A state of rest, we called that static equilibrium before. And we said when something travels at a uniform speed in a straight line, we called that dynamic equilibrium. And in both of those cases, static and dynamic equilibrium, the net force acting on an object is zero. So Newton's first law really just describes an object at equilibrium is going to stay at equilibrium. Newton's second law deals with what if the net force is not zero newtons? And if the net force isn't zero newtons, then what's happening is the object is being acted on by an outside force or an unbalanced force. Where the net force is not zero, it's going to be greater than zero. So how an object behaves if an unbalanced force is acting on it is that object is accelerating. If the force was balanced, either the object would be moving at a uniform speed or a constant speed in a straight line, or it would be at rest. So Newton's question was really, how does a net force change the acceleration of an object? And that brings us to Newton's second law. Now here's Newton's second law stated in words. The acceleration produced by a net force on an object is directly proportional to the magnitude of the net force in the same direction as the net force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. Now that's a lot to take in. Number one, just because it's kind of a lot of words and it has three parts, and number two, some of those words are kind of tough. So let's break it down. Basically what the first part is saying is that um, the harder you push, the faster something will accelerate. All right? The acceleration is directly proportional to the amount of force. When the amount of force you apply goes up, when you push harder, the acceleration will be faster, will be more. This example is shown down here. Here's a man pushing a cart. If he pushes that cart with twice as much force, the cart will accelerate faster with more force. The second part of this says the acceleration produced by the net force on an object is in the same direction as the net force. That, translated into everyday language, says an object will accelerate in the direction you push. The third part of this, the acceleration produced by a net force on an object, is inversely proportional to the mass of the object basically says heavy things are harder to push than light things. Heavy things, if you push with the same force, so that's what's being shown here, are two carts. One, um, one has twice the mass as the other, and if this guy pushes those with the same force, the heavier object, the object with more mass, is going to accelerate more slowly than the object with light mass. So, acceleration is inversely proportional to mass. Lighter things will accelerate faster than heavier things. Now when you break it down like that, to me, Newton's second law seems to be describing things that are really obvious for me. But where the real elegance of Newton's second law comes into play is that he was able to express it as a mathematical formula that's seen right here. A equals F over M. 
Now we've been dealing with these letters a lot, so you should know what they are. A is the acceleration, and the units for acceleration are going to be in meters per second squared. F is going to be that unbalanced force, and that's going to be in newtons for the units. And M is going to be mass, And mass, just like our, um, our weight versus mass calculations, mass must be in kilograms in order for this to work. So what I'm going to want you to do is to be able to be equally comfortable with having to find acceleration, force, or mass with this formula. So let's do one example problem of each. Determine the acceleration of a 12 kilogram cart that is pulled with a force of 30 newtons. Assume that there is no friction. So what's given to you in this problem? Well, let's start by marking it up a little bit. Here it says that it gives us the mass is 12 kilograms, and it gives us a force of 30 newtons. Now what's it asking us to do? What's it asking us to find? It says determine the acceleration. So the acceleration is what we don't know. Now, what I like to do is just put in the units up here. We know that the units for acceleration should be in meters per second squared. And then that way we don't have to worry about the units so much during the problem. Let's plug in these values. We know the force is 30 newtons, so let's put that up here. We'll divide that by the mass of 12 kilograms. And if you run that through your calculator, that's going to be 2.5. Now one of the reasons I like to put the units up here is because if we just divided this out, the units would be newtons divided by kilograms. Nothing cancels out. But remember that units are a pretty com or newtons are a pretty complex unit. That's it was kg per times meters per second squared. So if you just write your units up here, you can bring those units down to the bottom and see that this acceleration is 2.5 meters squared. On this next problem, we're looking at Miguel's car. It weighs 1,000 kilograms and it's out of gas. He's trying to push the car to a gas station and he makes the car go 0 0.05 meters per second per second. Determine how much force Mike is applying to the car. So, what's given to us? mass is given to us and it's 1000 kilograms and the acceleration is given to us and that's 0 0.05 meters per second squared. What's it asking us to find? It's asking us to find the force. And when we find that value it's going to be in newtons. So what you can do is you can either rearrange these letters to get force by itself, or you can plug in the numbers. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the numbers. Acceleration is 0 0.05 meters per second squared. We don't know the force, and mass is given to us as 1,000 kilograms. How do we dig out this 1,000 kilograms to get force by itself? We would multiply both sides by 1,000. When you run that through your calculator, you'll see that force is equal to 50. I'm going to grab our Newton, Newton unit from the top and put that right there. And here's our third and final example, and then you'll get to practice on your problem set. It takes 50 Newtons of force to move an object with an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. What is the mass of the object? It's giving us force, it's giving us acceleration, and what we don't know is the mass. But what we do know is that the units of that mass is going to be in kilograms. So let's go ahead and plug in our values. 2 meters per second squared equals 50 newtons over the mass. Now what do we have to do? We have to multiply both sides by m, 
to dig out that M. And I'm going to drop the units when I rewrite this. We can cancel out the, that mass. So this gives us 2M equals 50. We divide both sides by 2. And we get the mass is equal to 25. And we'll bring our units down to be kilograms. That's it. Those are the three types of problems that you're going to be expected to do. I hope this was helpful.